Welcome to Family Bible Time. We are in 1 Kings, 1 Kings 16, we're in Colossians chapter 3. Let's pray, let's go. Father, thank you for your word. Uh, thank you that even when we're super weary, um, your word is still what we need. We pray that you would minister to our souls. We pray for the energy, for the strength to read and to accurately handle your word. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And the word of the Lord came to Jehu. Daddy. <laughs> Jehu, the son of Hanani. This is a different Jehu from the other Jehu. Maybe we should call this one Jehu or yeah, Jehu idea. or something mm. like that. Yeah, good idea. Um, anyway, this one's Jehu, the son of Hanani. Um, who's, Hanani was one of the prophets. But... Uh, <laughs> me. Jehu seems to be a prophet because the Lord says to him um, it's, he, the word of the Lord came to him against Baasha and Baasha was the chap who just made himself king mm. verse 2 since saying since I exalted you out of the dust and made you leader over my people Israel and you have walked in the way of Jeroboam and have made my people Israel to, to sin provoking me to anger with their sins behold I will utterly sweep away Baasha and his house and I will make your house and I will make your house like the house like that of I'm so sorry. I will make your house like the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. Now you remember what happened to the house of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. It wasn't good. So this is the description. Verse 4. Anyone belonging to Baasha who dies in the city, the dogs shall eat. And anyone who, of his who dies in the field, the birds of the heavens shall eat. In other words, nobody's going to bury them. <laughs> That's a sad state to be, isn't it? Mm. Can you imagine someone in your family dying and nobody being available even to bury them? It says they're all going to die. Mm. And nobody's going to care for them. Now the rest of the act of Baasha and what he did and his might, are they not written in the books? In the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel. And Baasha slept with his fathers and was buried at Terza And Elah, his son, reigned in his place. Moreover, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Jehu. There we are. He is a prophet, the son of Hanani, against Baasha and his house, both because of the evil that he did in the sight of the Lord, provoking him to anger, with the work of his hands in being like the house of Jeroboam and also because he destroyed it. Yes. Um, so when it says that um, Beja slept with his fathers in verse 6 <sighs> yep. and was buried yep. at Terza, mm -hmm. how comes he was buried and the rest of his family wasn't? Oh, it's a really good question. I don't know. Uh, I hadn't even spotted the the difficulty there. So good spotting. Good spotting, indeed. Yeah. So any belonging to Baasha. So it doesn't say Baasha himself, but mm. anyone belonging to Baasha. Because I think Jeroboam. Was buried as well, wasn't he? Was he? I guess so. So he's saying all the family are going to... That's going to be their fate. So well spotted. Mm -hmm. Verse 8. 
Oh, sorry, this is going to be a long evening. <laughs> Hopefully you can do this on double speed. In the 26th year, <laughs> Asa, king of Judah, Elah, the son of Besha, began to reign over Israel in Terza. And he reigned two years, but his servant Zimri, the commander of half his chariots, conspired against him when he was at Terza drinking himself drunk in the house of Arza, who was over the household in Terza. Zimri came in and struck him down and killed him in the 27th year of, king, of Asa, king of Judah, and reigned in his place. When he began to reign, as soon as he had seated himself on his throne, he struck down all the house of Baasha. He did not leave him a single male of his relatives or his friends. Thus Zimri destroyed all the house of Baasha, according to the word of the Lord, which he spoke against Baasha by Jehu the prophet. For all the sins of Baasha and the sins of Elah his son, which they sinned when they made Israel to sin, provoking the Lord, God of, God of Israel to anger with their idols. Now the rest of the acts of Elah and all that he did, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of Kings of Israel? Now if you're noticing a trend so far in this chapter, everyone's a king of Israel. Do you remember the last time there was a bit of ping pong going on? And it's like, oh, it's the king of Israel. No, it's the king of Judah he's talking about now. Now we're back to the king of Israel. So this chapter is all just like Israel, 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 and it's all just getting bad from bad to worse. It ends up in the worst state possible with Ahab. But let's go through Zimri, shall we? In the 27th year of Asa, king of Judah, Zimri reigned seven days in Terza. That's a short reign. Than the nine day queen. Yes, and it's interesting, isn't it? Because a long reign is a sign, you would say, of God's blessing. It brings mm. stability to a nation. When you've got one king after another king after another king, mm. this is what you notice as it approaches the exile, when mm. Israel are going to be carried into exile, that they're just all mm. being replaced one after the other after another because there's so much political turmoil going on. Now the troops which were encamped against Gibbethon, which belonged to the Philistines, and the troops who were encamped heard it said, Zimri has conspired, and he has killed the king. Therefore all Israel made Omri, the commander of the army, king over Israel that day from the camp, in the camp. So Omri went up, sorry, went up from Gibbethon, and all Israel with him, and they besieged Terza. And when Zimri saw that the city was taken, he went into the citadel of the king's house and burned the king's house over him with fire and died. Or oh, who does that remind you of? Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I, was just saying, I was thinking that. Exactly. It? So Den- Denethor got his idea from, mm-hmm. well, Tolkien got his idea from. Mm-hmm. From the Bible, didn't he? From Zimri. Zimri, who wouldn't face Mm. defeat, and he instead decided to burn not just himself, but the whole house down. Verse 19, because of the sins that he had committed, doing evil in the sight of the Lord, walking in the way of Jeroboam, and for his sin which he committed, Oh, so sorry, making Israel to sin. Now the rest of the acts of Zimri and the conspiracy that he made, are they not written in the book of the chronicles of the kings of Israel? Then the people of Israel were divided into two parts. So not now not only has Israel been divided into the north and the south, but Israel is... The northern kingdom of Israel is now divided. 
half of the people followed Tibni, the son of Ginath, to make him king. And half followed Omri. But the people who followed Omri overcame the people who followed Tibni, the son of Ginath. So Tibni died, and Omri became king. In the thirty-first year of Asa, king of Judah, Omri began to reign over Israel. And he reigned twelve years. Six years he reigned in Terza. He bought the hill of Samaria from Shema for two talents of silver. And he fortified the hill and called the name of the city he built Samaria, mm. after the name of Shema, the owner of the hill. There's a little bit of Bible mm. trivia for you. Omri did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and did more evil than all who were before him. For he walked in all the way of Jeroboam, son of Nebat, and in the sins that he made Israel to sin, provoking the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger. Oh, why are you doing this to me? <laughs> By their idols. <laughs> Now the rest of the acts of Omri that he did and the might that he showed, are they not written in the book of the Chronicles of the Kings of Israel? And Omri slept with his fathers and was buried in Samaria. And Ahab, Boo, his mm. son, reigned in his place. In the 38th year of Asa, now just think about this. Remember what I was saying about the short reigns versus the long reign. A long mm. reign is a sign of stability for a nation, isn't it? Unless mm. it's a long, wicked reign, I guess. But these guys are not reigning very long. All this time, Asa, king of Judah, who was a good king, wasn't he? Mm -hmm. He's now in the 38th year of his reign. In the 38th year of king of Asa, king of Judah, Ahab, the son of Omri, Omri began to reign over Israel. And Ahab, the son of Omri, reigned over Israel in Samaria 22 years. And Ahab, the son of Omri, did evil in the sight of the Lord, more than all who were before him. <laughs> oh, I really wish you'd stop yawning. <laughs> <laughs> I kind of hope we're not making you you <laughs> yawn as well. We're making it more full of sleep. And if, and as if, <laughs> and as if it had been a light thing for him to walk in the sins of Cherubim, son of Nebat, he took for his wife Jezebel, the daughter of Ethbaal, king of the Sidonians, and went and served Baal. And worshipped him. He erected an altar for Baal in the house of Baal, which he built <laughs> in Samaria. What's funny? <laughs> what did I say? Did I read it wrong? And Ahab made an Asherah. Ahab did more to provoke the Lord, the God of Israel, to anger than all the kings of Israel who were before him. In his days, Heel of Bethel built Jericho. Mm -hmm. He laid it. He laid its foundation at the cost of Abiram, his firstborn, and set up its gates at the cost of his youngest son, Segub according to the word of the Lord, which he had spoken by Joshua, the son of Nun. Mm. That's really tragic, isn't mm. it? Gonna make it I am going to make it. You, the, Colossians chapter 3 would bring mm. someone back from the dead. Isn't that so good? Um, are you ready for this? Colossians chapter 3. Yeah. Um, if then you have been raised with Christ, Seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. 
for you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. That's the day Jesus returns, isn't it? Put to death, therefore, what is earthly in you. So when he says therefore, what he's saying is on the basis of Jesus, the fact that Jesus is coming back and he's going to, we're going to appear with him in glory, we should put to death what is earthly in us. And then here's the list. Sexual immorality, impurity, passion, evil desire and covetousness, which is idolatry. On account of these, the wrath of God is coming. In these, you too once walked when you were living in them. But now you must put them all away. Anger, wrath, malice, slander and obscene talk from your mouth. Do not lie to one another, seeing that you've put off the old self with its practices and have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. That's amazing. That is amazing, isn't it? So, wow, written here. Okay, what does he say? He says, don't lie to one another. That's big, isn't it? To tell the truth to each other, that's what we have to do. But he says, seeing that you have put off the old self with its practices. So this is talking to Christians. Mm. A Christian is someone who has, you would say decisively, at one point in time, put off the old self with its practices. They've repented of their sins, they've been born again. There's been a moment of like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not going to live like that anymore. And so he says, well, don't lie to each other because you've, you're done with that. You were lying, but you're done with lying, aren't you? And you've put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So there's this old nature, which is put off, at conversion, there's a new nature which is put on. And now you say, oh yes, but my new nature is not perfect. Okay, but the new nature, the new self, is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. So then when, you, when you're born again, you've got this new nature, the new self, then it just goes on being renewed, made new in knowledge after the image of its creator. So we get to be made more and more like him, the more and more we understand and are transformed and sanctified through the truth. It's a bit like what he was saying in chapter one, isn't it? It is. Mm. Cool. Can you not see it? Mm-hmm. Go on and read it. Oh. Um... And so from the day we heard, we have not ceased to pray for you, asking that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, bearing fruit in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God. Mm. So it's the, it's the knowledge which leads to bearing fruit. Mm. Yeah. Which leads to more knowledge. Which leads to more knowledge, yes. Yes, wonderful. You said it was like a feedback loop. Mm, Here, that's in the church, verse 11. Here, there is not Greek and Jew, circumcised and uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free, but Christ is all and in all. Every person is equally saved, equally Christian. Now there obviously were Greeks and Jews, weren't there? It didn't deny 
becoming a Christian doesn't deny the reality of your heritage, but it means that in the church we don't maintain those distinctions, circumcised and uncircumcised, as if somehow circumcised people are specially treated and uncircumcised people are not. So, barbarian, Scythian, slave, free. In the church, slave, a slave has the same status as a free person. Mm. Why? Christ is all in all. Christ, son of Christ is all. Christ means everything to us. And in all. Mm. As in, so every, if a slave, think of it, if a slave has Christ in them, well then, how could the master treat them differently from someone who's a free person? It'd be terrible, wouldn't it? If the Christ in them. It would be terrible if you treated any other Christian as somehow a lesser category of Christian. So in the church, those distinctions are broken down. Put on, then, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, compassionate meekness, that just says compassion and love, hmm. and patience, bearing with one another. And if one has a complaint against another, uh, another forgiving each other, as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. That's pretty impressive, isn't mm. it? So compulsory forgiveness mm. as the standard. Verse 14. And above all these, put on love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you were thankful. You were called in one body. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom, singing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God. And whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus giving thanks to the Father through him. Mm. Wives, submit to your husbands as is fitting in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives and do not be harsh with them. Children, obey your parents in everything, for this pleases the Lord. Fathers, do not provoke your children, lest they become discouraged. Slaves, obey in everything those who are your earthly masters. Not by way of eye service, as people pleasers, but with sincerity of heart, fearing the Lord. Mm -hmm. Whatever you do, work heartily as for the Lord and not for men. Mm -hmm knowing that from the Lord you will receive the inheritance as your reward, you are serving the Lord Christ. For the wrongdoer will be paid back for the wrong he has done. There is no partiality. Mm -hmm. Wow. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time reading your word. Thank you for the joy of the... the uh, teaching which is here help us to take it in help us to live like this lord to be transformed we pray that you'd help us to put on love above everything else and that you would enable us to forgive as we have been forgiven lord help us to have this amazing transformed mind even as we Seek you through the word. We pray that you would change us more and more and make us like you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. Well, we've still got some sound, but I don't have anything to put in it.
<laughs> I'm going to say good night. God bless you. I will see you, God willing, tomorrow. If the Lord wills and we live. <laughs>